We spent a lot of time in the brown badlands. We wanted to see rolling hills and we wanted to see the dark jungles and the high peaks and all the sort of wide range of environments that Pandora has to offer. We need to kind of do things and try things and be comfortable with the judgment that'll happen. And it's only by being comfortable with that that we can learn from it. Once I knew Jack was gonna be this huge sort of industrial millionaire, I knew I needed him to do something really big to Pandora that, that we didn't like. And the moon was ever present in Pandora because of the way our, our day and night cycle works in the game. And so I wanted him to sort of blot that out by putting his giant Hyperion H right in front of it. <laughs> and I wanted you to sort of be like, damn those jerks, they're like shitting all over my Pandora, you know? <laughs> It is not our goal to turn Borderlands into a game about cutscenes or a game about dialogue trees. Borderlands is about gameplay. What we'll be able to do now is that when there's an important monster roar or a huge attack about to happen, we can take all the other audio that's not important at that moment, bring it down, which makes that standout moment or attack uh, even that much more impactful. <laughs> A lot of folks in the industry, when the, the art direction was revealed, you know, approached me and, and, you guys are dumb, that's a huge risk, you're going to totally eat it. And I was like, I don't think so. So there's probably like five and a half, six million customers out there that have played Borderlands and they, they, they've become familiar with the things that they like. So we want to bring those experiences back again in a way that is respectful of those experiences and at best improved like more powerful or more interesting or just more fun kind of representations of that.